What's cracking, people? It's your man, Cousin T, a.k.a. the Alpha Wingman, representing high-level technicians, operating globally, and beyond. So listen, today I wanted to discuss a topic that <clears throat> comes up um, every now and again um, in spaces like this, where we try to develop the minds of young men who someday will grow up to be select and we try to interact and exchange ideas with men who are select and want to sharpen and further evolve who uh, who they are. All of it is for the purpose of becoming masculine masters. And one of the most important things to understand is what league you're in. And when I say league, I mean, what is the level of sexual, social, and spiritual league. Now, when I when I refer to the word spiritual, I, I essentially mean a person's energy or group's energy. Um, and that's uh, broken down into a person's essence, the essential elements that make up the qualities of a person. So that's, that's what I mean when I say um, spiritual. I think that word uh, tends to be misunderstood and misused in a lot of uh, instances. But beyond that, the example of sports leagues is probably the best example that a person can use when noting the difference in levels or the difference in the leagues that uh, a person is in. See, there, there are people who have never played sports who try to comment on uh, professional players all the time. People who have never played peewee league, who've never played middle school league, who've never played high school league, college league, and especially not the professional league, which means you're playing sports or activities for money and endorsements. And we're not even going to touch on the Olympic League, which at the Olympic level, it's more than just money. It is about geopolitical uh, positioning, but that's a, another conversation for another day. The point is that there's no way that a non-pro or a non-world-class athlete is going to know or understand or can even exist in the elite league uh, lifestyle the systems that they have in place, uh, the discipline, and especially the pressure of playing at the professional or elite level. Same thing when we talk about social, sexual, and spiritual leagues, uh, when it comes to men and women interactions, uh, and those interactions that, put, that take place at the dating level, the relationship level, um, and if they choose to take it there, the marriage level. So what does that all mean? Well, most men and women are sort of the equivalent of like a junior league or an intramural league uh, player at best. Because let's, let's just be honest, most people can't get beyond a person's looks or physical um, traits. The example is when the average woman uh, gets hit with that ASP Holy Ghost and it locks her up like a car that ha that's gone without an oil change for about three years. Or when a, the average guy comes into contact with a quote unquote IG model or uh, a Hawaiian Tropic model or a Playboy model or whoever you want to say, a 10, a straight up dime. He loses uh, his mental functions. He forgets his own name. He's clearly and obviously out of his or her league. The level above that would be the equivalent of major leaguers, which would be like the shot callers. These are the guys who uh, make moves and on the other side of that, enjoy the spoils and the lifestyle that comes with the discipline, that comes with the sacrifice, that comes with all of the things that it takes to be a select man. This is sort of the equivalent of being in the major leagues from um, a social and or economic standpoint. And 
just like being in the major league, there are benefits and there are positive points of the lifestyle that comes along with being at that level and in that league. And then there are the elites. Now, the elites are, of course, heads and shoulders above the rest. They move around in systems and in social circles that are simply unimaginable and unattainable to the average person or a junior leaguer or, you know, an intramural leaguer. And gentlemen, let's just be 100% honest. The reason why societies are set up so that there are, <clears throat> excuse me, differences in classes, there are differences in social strata, is to protect the sexual access among people who would not uh, be conducive to a um, forward-moving society. What does that mean? Originally, different social structures and social orders um, were established to weed out the weaker amongst the people. That's why the, the rites of passage uh, were set up and established. In the modern world, in the modern society, you have among the elites, you have a, a, among the um, uh, higher level or uh, upper middle class so, uh, social structures, those who originally would have been qualified as the weaker, the ones who use manipulation and tactics uh, to get to where they are, um, and not necessarily the strength of their vision, the strength of, of their determination and character, or their work ethic to get to where they are. People can be handed fortune, handed down fortunes and trust funds and, and things like that um, and have access to, you know, dimes or, you know, world class or high class or however you want to put it. Women and men simply because they exist or they were born into a certain space. But we all know that when we have these conversations over here, we have to bring out the equalizer. And the equalizer is sex. Sex is definitely the equalizer. It is the space where uh, no matter what your socioeconomic class is or what space you came from, what country you, or region of the planet you were born in, when you're interacting with a person um, in a sensual manner or within sexual activity, in that moment, you have nothing but your raw self to present to the other person. And gentlemen, believe me when I say that there are definitely leagues in the sexual space. I'll say that again. There are definitely leagues in the sexual space. Just like you got the junior league or the intramural league, which is, you know, where most people uh, range and uh, the average person range. Um, you've got the mastery league, right? Or the pros or whatever. But then you have the elites. That is that space uh, that the field master Ron Wills refers to as the shadow world. But the thing about uh, sexual leagues or understanding what your sexual league is, is that it's not something that uh, has a lot of barriers as far as being able to go up in the leagues because most people are born with the raw material, the raw elements of the sexual elite. The remaining, uh, the remaining people of the population have the ability to train and develop and to gain understanding and control over their own personal elements so that they can evolve up through the various uh, sexual leagues, believe it or not. It's just that most people don't 
understand that that's possible. Most people are too lazy to put in the work. Most people are, you know, have too many hangups um, and they never evolve through that. But you're over here. You're talking to your cousin Tito. Let's let's chop it up for a minute. Now, obviously, on the Patreon side, I go deeper into uh, these elements and we get more uh, a, a broader understanding of what these things are. And to put this into um, a, a better context, I often recommend uh, in my interactions with guys when um, we're discussing, you know, developing methods and tips uh, and, and just evolving uh, their masculine uh, mastery, I often recommend that every man have a threesome. Now, that may, you know, put some people off because they're trained and they're raised to, you know, be monogamous and uh, they can't even wrap their head around it. And how dare you? Well, here's the thing. Most men can't have a threesome. Now, uh, I make these uh, bold statements because I'm, I'm going to go further into that. Um, the logistics of the threesome um, in a couple podcasts to come. But at the end of the day, that's really the mentality of a man who has attained a level of sexual mastery and is consciously evolving to elevating his sex game to that elite level. And finally, I want to leave uh, this particular podcast with this scenario. Okay. See, the average guy thinks that since, um, you know, he's happening upon a woman that has a pretty face, a curvy figure, a nice feet, that she's worth approaching to get to know better. It's super basic, right? The select man is scanning the presentation of the same woman, her hands for a ring. What type of bag is she holding? Um, you know, these are things that could tell him the type of lifestyle she's accustomed to and uh, what he could be getting himself into. Her outfit, you know, uh, is she going to work? Is she going to the gym? Is she a kept woman, uh, simply stepping out of her high rise, you know, for a coffee. And he's thinking about uh, where she would fit on his roster and how all of these elements and factors are going to affect his approach angle. Finally, a masculine master simply goes about the business of his day. And if that same woman uh, that the average guy fawned over and the woman that the select man scanned and rated for his team happens to enter the space of that masculine master, there's only one thing on his mind in that moment. And that's why should I allow her into my world? Understand the difference between leagues, sexually, socially, and spiritually. As always, gentlemen, this is your man, Cousin T, a.k.a. the Alpha Wingman, saying stay sharp and mission focused. Later.